Hello everyone. My name is Dheeraj Lal and I welcome you to this business continuity podcast brought to you by Continuity and Resilience. I am today in conversation with R Vedyanathan who in 2020 was awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award by DRI and the year before by CIR magazine in the UK. Clearly he has been very busy and he must be getting very little sleep at night because along with all of this he also has a day job. as senior director and head for global bcm grc and client services at cognizant technology solutions in this podcast rv as he is happy to be called shares with us what makes a great bcm professional and his simple one word answer is passion he shares his learnings of what organizations must do who want to put in place robust business continuity rv's own passion for giving back comes across loud and clear so let's hear what rv has to say R Vedyanathan welcome to BCM with friends and thank you so much for being with us today your life and mine have been hugely intertwined and we've done a lot of things together in 2019 you were inducted into the BCI Hall of Fame for having won a BCI award three times around the same time my company core continuity and resilience was also incorporated into the BCI Hall of Fame for again having won an award in fact four times you won it for industry personality of the year indian south asia and we won it for service provider of the year across india and the middle east both you and i have been business county heads both you and i have been bsi technical experts when the business county standard first came out we both been chairs of bsi forums in our cities you for chennai i for abu dhabi and also later for delhi you of course were chair of the bci india chapter for about 3 years so huge achievements and the lifetime achievement award very well deserved so tell us about your journey even though i must admit i do know quite a bit about it because actually your journey started with us and i can't tell you how proud it makes me to see all that you've achieved and that's a great feeling you've actually gone on to in my view climb mount everest metaphorically but i'm sure you have many more peaks to climb so tell us how it's been thank you so much for giving this opportunity uh, to be on with you and the bcm with friends and let me first of all thank you for the visibility what i have today in fact the time when we joined together in bcmi when i was in tcs that's the starting point i believe i got exposed into bcm and the way that we interacted with each other and also uh, improvisation that we need to do from the overall bcm training into a consultancy is the actual starting point but then i need to probably also put in a bit way back forward where it all started so when i was working with hcl the time once i completed 10 years of my service engineer going to field and fixing up the networks and all those and that's the time i moved into an organization where i was interested with the information security of which the dr was one of the areas so which means i need to get geared up getting to know what is uh, disaster recovery i know yes that point in time all that it boils down to is just taking a backup in one of the cartridge checking whether the cartridge is okay copying it into another one and pushing it into the other location that you were still you were still more advanced than others because you checked that the cartridge is okay absolutely absolutely <laughs> absolutely and that's what is something that we always showcase it to the customers that this is something that we have as a backup and a disaster recovery anything happens we will be able to restore the data back right but what has happened is in couple of client visits the client came in and asked for it do you have a business continuity also so not clue at all what is business continuity yeah so that triggered me to probably get into that particular area what is business continuity in fact i was probably i would say to an extent humiliated in couple of client visits where they said don't you have anything on a process perspective people are not available what do you do and if the facility is totally gone what do you do yeah yeah so with that base and a certification that has to be done that's where i'm just was uh, googling around and found out the cbcp was the best thing and that's where i found my good friend mr dheeraj lal 
<laughs> you where i need to do the cbcp and we spoke about it and that time uh, dri uh, singapore was represented by you in india and started doing my certification once after doing the certification it was very very clear as to what is that we need to implement in the organization but not many in the organization understood what is uh, the overall cbcp dr and we need to implement it of course it was always the client driven the contractual driven that was the way that we were into it right and once after three four years getting into it section alone and doing it and not much of the things happening it just on more of satisfying the client and the contractual part i just thought i need to probably explore myself not with an it and to multiple other industries and domains that's where i joined with the company called bcmi which was led by you at that point in time and we tested our hands on one leasing plan company to start off along with uh, the uh, other major who was doing the dr there right so i think a lot of learnings from there that's where i said you are my second guru and the point of the platform that you gave to whatever that i have to jump in and where i am today is all because of you and most of the areas awards wherever i bought it or everywhere in the media have told that you are one of the person who has been uh, materialistic and probably bringing up uh, my to this level Yeah. So after that we tried our consultancy in couple of KPO organization then on custom uh, banking insurance uh, retail all those was all those three three and a half years of experience gave me a better confidence to handle any kind of situation any uh, kind of a bcp for any industry and a sector mm. so moving on from there was a point where i need to now get on to a certification body where i was also a technical expert again i followed your footpath in terms of getting you as the first technical expert for india and that took by triple nine and then i followed you you guided me it's been uh, a good journey so far a lot of things to be done and all those that i learned from all these years which was i would say uh, 25 30% of a practical experience that i had was completely possible back in cognizant with the commitment that uh, we had and we were able to probably do this and whatever uh, awards and certifications whatever that we have got is all because of what i've learned from all these years and still a long way to go every year we see some incident or other that probably gives you in during the current covid situation yeah. that opens up into organization so i will probably park for this time this has been the journey that i have enjoyed and still continue to enjoy and uh, keep doing it and i also spend a lot of time over the weekends for any of those uh, people who want to take this as a career as a career advice in linkedin also i do that and that way i would appreciate people getting into this particular uh, domain and uh, i would be open to probably bring up more people into this domain that's one of the biggest thing objective that i have in my mind fantastic fantastic great uh, lovely to hear thanks if you were to briefly summarize that what makes a good bcm professional uh, for anyone who's 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 looking to fast forward yeah one thing that you have to always uh, look at is any job or a work that you see it as just a profession it's not going to be working for you as the way that you expect so it's that passion that need to be picked up and any work any direction any career that you pick up if you have a passion towards it and a big thought force that you stay what is that you want to do it in the next 3 years what is that you want to do it in next 5 years is something if you have it in mind and if you are really liking to do that particular work again vcm is not a rocket science at all to me it just if you are having your upbringing in a nice way and also a uh, value system that is within you a uh, organized way and disciplined way of doing things you can definitely think about a lot of things that can go wrong and then try and bring it so my advice would be with a discipline with a organized way of doing things and a passion towards this bcm but definitely help a person to grow up in this career and should definitely look at it holistically and should be able to connect the dots that's very very important uh, for a bcm profession so talking about learnings what have been your learnings from covid and and how have you then changed your documentation your processes your readiness and really come out of this much stronger presumably absolutely so i 
I would rather position it more of from the industry perspective in general, as seen across organization, across the region, not just only my organization. Every incident gives some learnings or other, but this one incident gives a lot of learnings, which is the BCM need to be agile. You need to be able to adapt to the situation. Right. You would rather probably get into a resilient mindset, not just only at the BCM people or recovery who is doing it or delivery side. It's also the leadership that has to be resilient. And we saw the entire team right from the CXO level to the person who joined into the organization worked as a team. The collaborative thing that happened over a period of two to three weeks, I think most of the organization, whatever was not possible, whatever we said as a, uh, a laptop is one of those uh, strategies that could be the best strategy for any basic situation which we have been driving, not just in our organization, everywhere in the industry, it was looked at as more of a security challenge. Yeah. And that was also addressed during this period, including mm -hmm. client's approval, including the waiver in the contract. And one of those survey when I see in uh, Gartner, uh, it said, whatever that has to happen in the next eight to 10 years have happened in the last eight months. Digitization, the cloud computing, uh, remote working, all those have, which were uh, even including the training part, which we used to say the lead auditor training or anything. No, no, it has to be a physical one. But everything happened, including the audit that happened recently, happened virtually, which was not possible. So it comes with the necessities of mother of invention and possibly uh, area now. When I come back to this, is the proactive thing in terms of uh, resilient that need to build up. Each and every function need to have a uh, resilience as a tower where yeah. one person is in charge so that anything that could go wrong can probably be bouncing back. And if they have the ownership, if each and every function thinks that and comes back and the entire organization can bounce back very fast. So this opens up an opportunity I would rather see for an organization-wide resilience, which is beyond BCM. This is a part where there has to be a very clear crisis management team which actually swung into action along with the IT that was able to enable their bandwidth and in terms of VPN and all those that has to be done. And the resources challenge were always there during this particular period. That is also one of the learning that we need to see. And uh, typically uh, the kind of uh, work from home policies and whether the testing has been done, all those are something that we need to look at. And given the current work from home uh, uh, challenges of resilience building back home because of power failure, because of uh, uh, internet connectivity failure, and all those uh, resilience needs to be done. If everything goes off, fine, it's fine. Only thing is the organization, what we are there in the one risk that was taken by corporate has now gone into multiple individual homes where it has become individual risk. Right. So corporate managing it. That's a bigger stick that we carry. Uh, proactive organization resilience can be the only way that we can face any situation and handle any situation. Right. Absolutely. Makes sense. Uh, there are a number of organizations who did not have a formal business country plan, program, thought process at all. Obviously, everyone had to adapt and they did. Uh, many of them are saying, okay, this was probably a near miss. We kind of managed, maybe not the best, but it's all right. So many of these organizations would now be saying, okay, we managed, but are we okay or do we need to do more? So I hope quite a few entities will say, now let's take this opportunity to actually build a full-blown business country management system. What advice would you have to those organizations? How should they go about the process? Well, but, uh, the point which I shared already, I would rather say one is organization which did not have a formal business country management in place. And those organizations had some business country management in place. It's for the sake of showing it to the customer and to meet the regulation. That's the second part. And the third part is the one that I would rather probably focus on the organization mindset will be for that. Today, the gap is, okay, because uh, business country management is required, I need to get certified. Client is asking for certification. I need to have one particular function driving the VCM. That's why I have the VCM. It's just that. But... Is it really become a, a discussion, the board at the higher level? Is it something looked at a BCM risk is talked about there? And what is the budget that is allocated towards that? All those are questions. So it has to start with the leadership. And today, if you see an organization which have been able to come out very well, 
or those organizations which already had some bit of a BCM actually should show the customer they were able to build up on that and the leadership got into action, the commitment that was proven. If that is not there, it's not going to happen. So with this learning, when they look at it, a proper a risk assessment and a impact analysis. This is a part of a technical thing that you do from a BCM perspective. It need not have to be a full flown and full blown and full fledged kind of a thing. But for the areas that you need to look at, that's the right way of looking at it. And also, it cannot just be done. Though I said it's a rocket science and uh, something that we can always pick it up, but a structured learning of understanding end to end. Otherwise, what happens is you put a guy who is just been working into one particular area of the BCM without knowing holistically where to start, where to end, would always be a challenge. Yeah. So that part is something need to be taken care of. A person who is very competent, a team that has to be probably working on, and with a leadership commitment, they need to take it. And the learning that they've got it from this, what are the challenges in terms of strategical thing? Of course, a budget that could be coming in along with it would be the right way to start off and over a period of time, based on the culture of organization, would be the right way to start up the business country management perspective. So, of this, the first one, which I said, not even having a VCM, and the second one, just to show off with the client, this part is the third part, which we say, for my survival, I have to do it. If that comes in with all the passion that the organization should exist and the person turns uh, more into it, and everybody's aware in the organization is a Focus area, if they have it, I think it will definitely be a success. It's it's really back to the people. People mindset approach. Absolutely. If, if you're clear it has to be done, you'll find uh, out all the right ways to do it, get the right people and be able to push it forward. And the structure learning has to be there. People will have to understand. They have to be competent enough in terms of taking it for which right. a base level of some kind of a training that should be in place. So, well, I think, uh, RV, thank you so much. It's been a fascinating discussion. It's wonderful to see. And the question I asked you at the beginning, what next? You've climbed it all. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so great, great journey. Uh, please find another peak to climb. Uh, I, I hope you'll find a new Mount Everest and uh, wish you all the best. And, and really, I think uh, I didn't interrupt you in between. You've been very generous. And I know thank me at various times in various forums. And, and what I've always said is it's you. It's all the right things you said, and maybe, maybe it's all of us. Uh, perhaps a lot of people spurred me along. Uh, perhaps I spurred you along. But ultimately, what you made of it is you, uh, and not me. So at least the platform is required, dear. That's what I'm saying. It's the one point you gave it. One of the point two three people, which I probably said. And right now, within my own organization, it is my uh, BCM head who is probably giving this opportunity of just yeah. going with the photo that I need to do. Absolutely. So, Making use of that, yes, definitely after that comes the hazard. But that platform that needs to be given, that visibility that needs to be given is something very much important, which many people do not get it. Right, absolutely. So that's one thing that we need to get. But one thing is, if you get that opportunity, anybody for that matter, that would be my advice. If you get an opportunity, make use of it immediately and never forget the roots of it, whoever gave you that particular platform. That would be my advice. And that's how you can come to the level what I'm doing. I'm not claiming that I've each week, but there's a lot of things that I need to do, which I have in mind. I've been interacting with people and more of such things possibly would be possible. And thanks for this platform, wherever it goes in and people are able to come up and then join more to align with my objective of developing this community within India and India should be resilient. And at least next five to seven years, 10 years, whatever, uh, I would like to probably push in this and then get uh, more of the industry experts from India and it's already coming up. And even in any of the world conferences, we see a lot of Indians getting there and all those. That's also one of the areas that I'm focusing on where right. India should be on top. And as you said, is it resilient? It's not just resilient for the sake of uh, meeting customer obligation or regulation. It should be something, yes, it's really resilient by design of it. That's no, what no. Is my expectation and mindset. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks, RV. Uh, absolutely delight. Thanks for your time. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take Have care. Nice day. Mm-hmm. <laughs>